Good morning and welcome to AWS and DevOps world. And we warmly welcome to Cloud Binary. Before we start our demo, I would like to introduce myself. Who am I? Myself, I'm Keshav Kumari, have 13 plus years of experience. I'm working as a DevSecOps engineer. And we will be having three demos. Today is a day one where, where I'm going to discuss about only cloud computing. Tomorrow, we'll be discussing about a vendor or provider called cloud computing provider called AWS. <laughs> Third day, DevOps. If you don't understand these three things, first is the cloud computing. Under that, there are many vendors we have. One of the provider will be working, that is called AWS. Once you understand these two things, then you as a DevOps engineer, what to do on cloud or what to do on on-premises, you'll be learning it. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, three days, three demos, starts with today. First day, cloud computing, second day, AWS, third day, DevOps. We'll do some hands-on as well. Let us begin with the today's agenda. We are going to talk about seven topics today. First one is what is cloud computing? Second one is what is on-prem data center? Because if you don't understand on-prem data center, you cannot understand cloud computing. There is a interlink between these two. And then we will be discussing about what cloud computing is offering in terms of models and what the what all the services they have in it. What is the difference between on-premise services and cloud computing services? Who will manage what? Next, list of cloud computing vendors and their market share. Why cloud computing? Benefits of cloud computing. Then finally, you should know about it, which is job opportunities in cloud computing. After completion of this course, what kind of jobs I or you can apply? Then we will summarize it. Let us understand what is cloud computing. So let us continue with understanding of uh, what is cloud computing. Here, if you see what all the devices we have here, we have mobile phones, we have laptops, we have desktops. If you look at the screen, what we have is, with the help of desktop, we are connecting to the cloud. With the help of mobile phones, we are connecting to the cloud. With the help of laptops, we are connecting to the cloud. Desktop, laptops, smartphones, iPad, so Samsung tab, whatever you have, with the help of devices, we are connecting to the cloud. What we have in the cloud? What is cloud? Cloud is nothing but until now you are accessing Google Drive. Are you? We are accessing Google Drive. What we are keeping in a Google Drive? We are storing data. What kind of data it is? Images, files, or documents, whatever you have prepared. You are storing in a remote server. With like this, one of the cloud computing vendor, you are storing your data. How are you accessing it? With the help of browser. Different browsers, you are connecting it. And are you connecting from a specific device only, or are you connecting from any device? Every time you're connecting from the specific device or any device, mm -hmm. any device, right? What you do, you provide just your username and password to, to log into the Google Drive. Upload or download, you do it. That means you are connecting to the remote data center. In a layman way, you're connecting to the remote data center where data center has a virtual machine. This you're connecting it. To this virtual machine, you're connecting it. And as part of the virtual machine, what you have, you have a folder. You are using Windows operating system. What you do in your Windows operating system, you create folders, right? Inside the folder, what you do, you store the data. Same thing you are doing in the cloud. Until now, what you're doing is you're connecting to the Google Drive and storing the data. What is happening in the back end is this data is stored onto the one of the virtual machine, virtual machine. That could be a Windows operating system or that could be a Linux operating system. But your data is available in one of the remote location. The remote thing, you're connecting with the help of various devices, various applications as well. Sometimes you connect with the Chrome, sometimes you connect with the Mozilla, sometimes you connect with the Internet Explorer, Safari. These are the browsers. You use hardware, use operating system, you use 
uh, applications. What you're doing, you're connecting remote storage. The remote storage cannot be executed without operating system. On top of the operating system only, the storage is available. Even if you take example of your smartphone, you take the pics. Every time now everybody is taking, wherever you go, you take selfies. Your selfies are storing where? Your images are storing where? On your smartphone. There is a storage. Whenever you're buying a device, you ask, what is the storage? Apart from the operating system, system storage, how much free space I have? Why one image is one MB image now today? It was previously KB's image. Now that image, what you take, example from Instagram, we'll go and we'll have a apply filter and take the one image that is 2 MB, 3 MB size file. You have one GB free space, and then you can store only less amount of images. 10 GB storage, more images you can store, more data you can store. So what am I, why I'm saying all this is, let me erase this and uh, let's discuss in a simple way. Until now, knowingly or not knowingly, you were already connected to a, from your device, you connected to a remote data center. Remote data center is nothing but this one. There what we have is, we basically say servers. Servers are nothing but an operating systems. On these servers, these are the operating systems. Like rather I say this one, uh, I'll just remove this part. Okay. So let's go with this one. Here, when I say servers, you will have operating systems. This OS are two types, majorly what you are aware of. One is Windows operating system. One is Unix, Mac OS means what I use Apple product or if I use iPhone, this is also called the Unix kernel. Next one, what you have is Linux. Next, what you have is Unix distributions, Linux distributions and Unix distributions. So you we have only two types of operating system, Windows operating system or Unix operating system. All these are, if you see Mac operating system, Unix distributions, they are the they are using the kernel of Unix. So they are the same family. So this, op this servers, when we say operating systems, there we have two operating system, for example. One is Windows, one is Linux. Where it is running? A remote location, a physical remote location. Cloud computing is nothing but a physical remote location that, that is being accessed by you using a browser, using various devices. First thing is devices. Second thing is applications. Third is about where you're connecting, to whom you're connecting. Are you connected to Yahoo? We used to use Yahoo. After the Yahoo, I see most people are using Gmail. Then uh, if you're part of an organization, you use Office 365, which is uh, again from Microsoft product, send and receive emails. So whom you're connecting it? They are storing the data on servers. Servers means two types operating systems, Windows operating system or Linux operating system or Unix. On top of this, what is happening is on this operating system, obviously this operating system will have storage. Your data, Google Drive data is being stored here. So servers will have operating systems, operating system will have storage. And on the same servers, you can install databases. Then you are using operating systems, databases, storage. Same thing we have in our smartphone as well. If you just focus more, what you're doing, you're storing the data. That is called storage. You are saving contacts. That's called database. And where are you doing all this? On top of the operating device, there is an operating system is running. Hence, operating system is running. You are able to store the data in two different ways. Some you do it on database. Some you do it on local storage, normal storage. Yes or no? Same thing what we are doing in the cloud. You have storage devices, you can run applications, you can run software platforms, or also you can do VDIs, virtual desktops, which means if you pay attention during our pandemic, what really happened, everyone was started working from home. Until then, until 2019 December, 
nobody when i say nobody most of the teams doesn't have a laptop they have given desktop at office why everybody want to come to office that's what they have designed what happened after 2020 march 19th and 19th of 20 i believe what happened pandemic started everybody started working from home then we were running out of laptops at home what happened if you are part of any organization they leave two laptops for you one laptop is from company's laptop second laptop is your project laptop to give one laptop is cost of 2 lakhs close to 2 lakhs one laptop is company's laptop is 2 lakhs cost they are giving two laptops already you have one for example let's say whoever is working from office they have desktop and company has a project to provide a laptop customer will have a project to provide a laptop now customer sitting in somewhere us or europe and because of pandemic they cannot send laptop to india because of courier issues so nobody has worked right during that time so during that time one of the thing which was very famous from the cloud computing is called virtual desktops virtual desktops i already have one device using this device i can log into another laptop another desktop that we call it as vdi virtual disk image or operating system so using the same my laptop i will install a application called connector through that connector we will connect to the virtual desktop then you don't need two laptops you are saving two lakhs on physical device so this is one of the boom now everybody now i have only one laptop why second laptop was not given to me why during the pandemic they mentioned that since you have your company's laptop which is a secure laptop on the same laptop they allow this application to install using that application i will be connecting remote operating system i will work on that particular platform from there i can not copy anything to my work laptop from my work laptop to customer laptop any environment i cannot copy it. you cannot download you cannot upload which means secure environment that's called virtual desktop when i say software on our smartphone when we buy it comes with a default operating system which example android by if we buy a phone first application is whatsapp next instagram first whatsapp whatsapp is what the software from where you download and install play store play store means what it's a centralized server right somewhere it is available on the cloud you have softwares are available from there you are downloading and installing on your device so using our smartphones we are downloading softwares on our devices once we download software what we are doing we are installing and using it same service available in the cloud that's called software platforms different softwares are available tomorrow if you bake some software you need to upload it to the google store or apple store then only apple users or android users will be able to download and use it download and consume it use it simply consume next what you have applications let us understand applications let's go with the example of whatsapp itself what you are doing you are downloading the software and installing and using the whatsapp on your uh, smartphone now what happened whatsapp has released one version called web application what you will do you go to your whatsapp you say i go to your laptop you open a browser web.whatsapp.com you open then you scan it whatever it was configured on your smartphone whatsapp same thing is synchronized to your browser one is desk one is application the other one is website website is nothing but an application what what all the website you are aware of it as of now i see you are aware of whatsapp which is nothing but how do you access this web. whatsapp.com next one what you are aware mostly you will log into your bank accounts even bank account also they are providing mobile applications they are providing desktop applications nothing but websites web or app 
app stands for application web stands for web application if it is app means software they keep it in a play store they keep it in I, ios player or play store then you download and you download the software on your smartphone and you consume it now next you have laptop or desktop what you do you open a browser you search for this particular site then you open and start scanning it and use it so you're using web application you are using mobile application categories i'm trying to explain so what cloud is offering is it's offering servers storages applications and virtual desktops what are you see now five things without you are getting into the cloud you are already this at least five users you are five users we are accessing web applications to laptop or desktop or smartphone next you are downloading and installing softwares and using applications two third one is about you are storing the data in google drive nothing but it is coming from servers once you are part of real time then you start using virtual desktop you store data storage data nothing but when this operating systems are running they are using the storage hard disks hard disk dedicated hard disk so what is cloud computing in a layman way is a physical data center is available to available across the globe so this data center might be available near to our home maybe the same data center might be available in us to this data center using devices we are connecting it different devices we are connecting it what we have here these are the different services a physical data center it is using different devices different applications we are connecting it that's called cloud computing oh it's not cloud computing it's only one data center we have we cannot say this is a cloud computing like this data centers across the globe across the globe if we have then it is a cloud computing provider provider will have not only this particular five services it will have more than five services approximately if i take an example of aws 241 services they have as on today when they started their journey in the 2006 they started with s3 sqs and ec2 they started with these three services in 2006 by 2023 they have 241 services with them that that means they don't have one physical data centers they have 31 regions they are into their presence is 30, 31 regions in each region, they have minimum of two data centers. If we calculate them, there are 99 data centers they have as on today. Their presence is across the globe. If somebody's presence is across the globe, then you have to say it's a global provider. When it is a global provider in terms of cloud computing, yes, is a cloud computing provider called AWS is a cloud computing provider. Tomorrow you want to get into this business, cloud computing business. Let's say you only started one particular data center in Hyderabad. Then you're not called as a cloud computing provider. You are a uh, private data center or private cloud. Private cloud. Why? you have Your presence is only one location in the in, in entire world. If your presence is across the globe like AWS, when they started, they started with one, one place with three services. They started seeing that customers are using it. They started growing. They started launching data centers. Region-wise, they're launching it. In Hyderabad also, we have one data center, uh, three data centers. In India, total two regions. Mumbai, three data centers. Hyderabad, three data centers. Total six data centers we have in India. Why? We are the one who are consuming a lot of internet in terms of many ways. So we are the one who are consuming a lot of internet today because we see like devices are cheaper and we see internet is cheaper and we lot of, we see, we do a lot of things over internet. 
So directly or indirectly, we are using cloud computing, but we are not aware of it really. Are we using cloud computing or not? But yes, you are already cloud computing user. And if you have only one data center, then it is called on-premises data center or corporate data center. I'll go with the next image. Yeah, once again, I would like to say, in cloud computing, what all we see is, we see servers, storages, databases, networking, software, analytics, internet, intelligence over internet. And when you have intelligence over internet upon the cloud, what you do? You are recent innovation. What is that recent innovation? Where everybody's chat GPT, you're feeding the machine and machine is giving accurate information. Even without that also we were using it. But what was the problem? When you ask one question in Google, you get two, <laughs> multiple answers, right? You need to analysis which is a right, which is wrong. Because of chat GPT, your analysis is very easy. At least nearby it's giving you. Not 100% accurate, nearby it is giving. Why? It is developing, still in, in beta version it is. So at least we can see that, yes, we have very good innovation because of internet, hence intelligence, by feeding the machine. Next one is on-premise data center. Here I would like to talk about on-premise data center. For example, if you want to set up your own uh, data center, or you want to get into the cloud computing business, you want to, like many people are doing many business now. If, since similar way, if you want to get into the cloud computing business, you have to start with one data center first. You have to start with one or two services first. But setting up this data center, if you see, this is called real estate. Whatever you see, this entire thing is a real estate. You need to buy the land or rent the land, rent or buy. For to set up a minimum data center, at least you need uh, one acre of land, which is a cost of minimum in Hyderabad, if it is five crores minimum. And you need to set up this whole thing, whatever you see here, you need to set up all these things, monitoring systems, desk, infrastructure, and not only that, you need to hire these people. And not only that, you have to follow as per uh, LAF land, there are a lot of licenses will be there. And that licenses are not static for years, dynamic, every year you have to renovate. And uh, sorry, renewal, you need to renewal them. And not only that, the hardware, what you see here or here, today you buy, tomorrow it is outdated. You have to continuously go, keep on replus. Buying a server hardware, I'll tell you, minimum five lakhs, the server hardware. What you see here, 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 one rack, one rack is called more than uh, five lakhs. Dell, if you buy with the Dell, they have some price. If you buy with the uh, IBM, they have some price. So in this particular, what you see is like a look like Almara, right? Look like Almara it is. But how many will be there here? At least approximately 20 blades will be there. It's called blades. Each blade cost is 5 lakhs. On one blade, you can run multiple operating systems. Because it comes with a uh, virtualization operating system. On top of that, you run multiple Windows, Linux, Unix, Mac operating systems. So this hardware, today they buy it. After one year, it is outdated. New blade will be released by Dell. You have to decommission old one. You have to upgrade it. If you don't upgrade, who will come to you? No, but no customers will come to you. Performance of your application will be very less. So that's the reason if you maintain a, your own private data center, you have to take care of all this. It's a huge cost expensive. expensive. So that's the reason this was understood by Amazon.com in the year 2002. By 2004, they came up with a documentation. By 2006, they started their first data center in North Virginia, and they launched three services. Since they, they were into e-commerce business, Amazon.com, they earn a lot of money. Their application itself posted on cloud, their own data center. For them, it's easy. That's what they spread across the globe. 
before Microsoft came. Microsoft came in 2010 and Google Cloud came in 2011. Who started their journey? When they uh, you know, launched their first three services, this 2006 and AWS. So that's the reason everybody started, not only everybody, like you know, we see, have seen a uh, lot of startups. Everybody's, why is they are starting companies? Because of cloud computing. Within five minutes, if you have an idea, and I have a capital, if we join together, then we can start a company within five minutes. Let's say hi, we hired a developer. He has given a code to us. Go to AWS, create a code, upload the code, and your application is ready. We can open our business within five minutes. Go global in five minutes. And in olden days, before 2006, you need to have this data center or you have to go with the community data center. Community means somebody is already using it. You go and ask some space. For that, he will charge you. So this is about cloud computing. This is about on-premises. And one more thing, in on-premises, you will not have services like in cloud computing. Means minimum one, maximum 10 services you might see on cloud computing, not more than that. Like AWS, like Azure, like GCP, they have 200 plus services today. These services, you cannot keep it on on-premise data center. And this on-premise data center, you cannot connect using different applications. You cannot connect using different uh, devices. You should use laptop or a desktop. And there you need to install some software. With the help of software only, you will be connecting. But wherein if you go with the cloud computing vendor called AWS or Azure or GCP, you can connect from your Python code, Java, Terraform, Ansible, or simple shell script, or simple PowerShell script. With the help of that, you can connect to the cloud and you can create what you want. Operating system, yes. Storage, yes. Load balances, yes. So there, there are a lot of limitations in upon the on-premises, but the way on-premises works similar way cloud computing works. That means it's a physical data centers are available across the globe and they are offering a lot of services. Hence, it is called cloud computing. Their presence is across the globe. Now, let us understand about types of cloud computing models and their services. Before I move further, please let me know if until now, I explained only two concepts. What is cloud computing? What is on premises? Stepan, any question? Any questions? Anybody? Until now, are we clear? Now let us try to understand about models, cloud computing models. Along with that, services. What services we are we are getting it up on the cloud? We have private cloud. We have public cloud hybrid. Public cloud example is AWS where you have more than one service and where you can connect AWS services with the help of various devices, various applications, SDKs. And this facility doesn't exist with on-premise data center. On-premise data center is nothing but similar like private data center, where you have limited services and limited access to your only corporate environment, your specific company, one company or two company max. But like, Upon public cloud, what you get, you will not get it in a private cloud. Combination of both is become hybrid. Means, I'll take an example of one more year. Now we have banking system in India. I, I might take SBI. We have many other vendors. SBI has many applications, web applications. So even mobile applications also they have. Let's say this is a mobile application and this is a web application. Web application means open from the browser. Mobile application means installable software. And these applications are running from where? They're running from public cloud. When you open a browser, type online sbi.com, 
you're opening a static information, static information. There is no sensitive data. There is a static information. The static information is coming from where? From cloud computing vendor. But where they are storing our data, the moment you log in here, what you do, you provide username, password, and you click on submit button. The moment you provide these details, what is happening? It is going to the private cloud, nothing but SBI's separate on-prem data center. Applications are running in a cloud. Data is coming from their own data center. Why? Because as per law of land, they don't want to keep the sensitive information, sensitive personal information upon the cloud, upon somebody's cloud. Then why they are running applications? Application doesn't hold any data. That is the reason they are running applications on cloud called public cloud, called AWS. And why they are not storing the data in cloud? Because there is a law, as per law, they are storing on their own data center. What they are storing? Only sensitive data they are storing. This data is being used when the user is provided username and password click on submit. The moment he or she provides this details, that information is being validated in the on-premise data center. That's how the application is designed. Developer will be writing. Here you comes two developers. One is called front-end developer, where you see username, password, submit button. This UI is developed by a UI developer. The moment you provide it is and click on submit button, right? There is a function is executing or class. This class is executed. What it consists? Database connection, database connections. Where the database is available? On-premise data center. IP address, username, passwords will be inside this class or function. This class or function is created by a backend developer. That is called Java developer. Example I'm giving, Java developer. So he is the one who writes this function. Inside this function, he will be calling variables, username, password, and post name. And this, these are the details. And there is one more person is involved here who creates a database, who create table, who, who insert the data. Who will insert the data? Who will set up this database? Database administrator. Who create these tables? Database developer. Who feed the data? We all feed the data. How do we feed the data? How do we insert the data? By filling registration form. When you provide detail, you are backend, there is a SQL query will run, insert query will run. Your data is being stored to the database by you. When you say my username, my password, when you provide username and password, your information is being validated here. And once it is correct, you will be logged into the application and you see your dashboard. How many people are involved? UI developer, backend developer, DB admin, DBA developer, monitoring team, who monitors applications and who monitor your login, logouts, security people, networking, this entire flow is designed by them. Then maybe it is running on cloud, means cloud computing, uh, cloud engineers, architects. And um, if it is running on-premise, data is coming from on-premises. I just now you've seen that on premises, so many people were there. These many are involved to take care of this. So hybrid means combination of on premises and cloud. Upon the cloud, what you're running, you're running applications where application doesn't require any data to store. Why are you running in on, on cloud? Because cloud provides high availability, reliability, cost optimization, performance, scalability. Altogether is scalability. That means, example, for scalability, I'm giving an example. Morning 9 to evening 5. Mostly, we all access various applications. This is called business hours, right? 9 to 5 is a business hour. Before 9 o'clock, you won't touch phone. Maybe some people might be, but you, you will not log into any applications. Until 9, you will get up ready and whatever you do. But after 9 to 5, you do business. So during that time only you will access more. When I say during that time, that's the peak hours. Peak hours will be traffic will be high. So that's how cloud computing vendors provides you high availability, scalability whenever there is a traffic. 
Whenever there is a low traffic, anyway, you go with a minimal service. Whenever huge traffic, nine to five, they scale up, they add one more service, one more server like this, they scale up. That's called scalability. And once the traffic is normal, again, it will go down. Scale up, scale down, scale up, scale down. This functionality doesn't exist with on-premise data centers. That is the reason everybody is going to the cloud. They are hosting their services over there. What is not there with the cloud on-premises data center, they are getting a benefit from the cloud computing vendors. Ultimately, what they want everybody, even cloud manager, for an example, if they are running an application, all the customers, all the students should see their website. Yes, or no? If website goes down sometimes, let's say you and me are accessing, it went down for five times. So you don't recommend somebody. You even you don't feel happy to open again. Same thing. To avoid this, applications are hosted in cloud. Are we clear? Next, we'll go with the next example. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know. Yeah. Next comes to services. I would like to discuss about services here. So these are the public cloud providers. You can see the list of them. And here is on-premises. On this is about corporate or on-premise data center. And this is your private data center. What we have in on-premises, what we have in cloud, and what we are responsible for what. Let's say after completion of this course, you might go as a cloud, uh, cloud engineer, you might go as a DevOps engineer, but you will be in a position to so you might be working as a cloud computing in a cloud engineer, or you might be working as a DevOps engineer. There is a slight difference between this, both the roles. If you're part of on-premises, even sometimes you'll, you might be a part of on-premises, maybe. So if it is on-premises, you have to take care of all of this. Perhaps with networking, storage, servers, virtualization, operating systems, middleware, runtime, data, and application. All will be managed by your own company. Nobody manages. But if you go with the Example, public clouds, they are offering these three services, infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, software as a service. Orange one is, is managed by us, blue ones are managed by vendor. If you provision an operating system and install some software, provisioning itself is called infrastructure as a service. If you provision an operating system in the cloud, you will be fall under here. If you just upload your code, let's say you're a developer or you're a businessman and you have some, you know, you hired freelancer uh, developer, you have taken a code, you upload it to cloud, one of the service, and you host your hosting your application by yourself, then it comes here. That's called platform as a service. You use a tool from cloud, you upload your code, you deploy up the application. Your application is accessible by everybody. Your business is running. Next one is a simple example is Gmail, <clears throat> your Google Drive. Software services nothing but you just sign up. You just sign up. Instagram, Facebook, software service. You just sign up and we will just play around with it. That's it. You're not paying to anybody anything. After free search, for example, you want to promote your business in Instagram. They say paid ads. That's what they get money. Google, 15 GB is free. After 15 GB, they say you need to upgrade it. That's what they get money. You may ask why, how come they, they are providing free means? They get money from your out of your free usage. For example, there is a limit. After your limit, they get money. Not only that, since you are providing your first name, last name, email ID, your details, your mobile number, they sell your data. For contact, they sell third party. That's what they get a lot of money. That's what they, they never ask money for you until your 15 GB is filled. So that's, that's an example of software service. By now, what you must understood, uh, understand is we have on-premise data centers. The next level of on-premise data center is cloud, cloud computing. On-premise data center has limited resources where you have to take care of end-to-end. -end, where if you go with a third party, cloud computing vendors, where they manage something and you manage something based on the service what you use. They have public cloud, they have private cloud, they have hybrid. Hybrid means combination of both. Private. And these are the services you have. 
tomorrow as a cloud engineer or DevOps engineer, if your project manager or customer asks you to provision operating system, that means you fall under infrastructure service. Your, your project manager, there is a code, you just upload it. Then you fall under platform and service. He will say, just use S3, upload your code, software service. You're creating a code with AWS, there is S3. S3 is equal to your Google Drive. Google Drive is providing 15 GB, here it is 5 GB free. And what is the difference between Google Drive and here? S3 will have versioning, Google Drive will not have versioning. And other options also we have in uh, S3. I'm just giving you highlights. Now let's move on with the next one, which is called list of cloud computing vendors and market share. So how we discussed, now you see the quarter three results of 2022 of all cloud computing vendors. Now you can choose why you should learn AWS by looking at this graph. This is not designed by me. I just Googled it, I got it, and I'm just sharing with you. So that's the reason. Even if somebody is running their workloads on Azure also, they hire AWS DevOps engineer, AWS guy. Rather I said DevOps engineer, AWS cloud computing. Better word I guess. Why? Because AWS has a lot of services where other vendors doesn't have it. By looking at AWS, Azure or GCP, Alibaba, all are just copy pasting. While pasting, they are using the different names because they cannot use the same names, right? Look and feel, ambience is different. That's it. So that's the reason AWS is a leader in the cloud. He has a 34% 34, 34 market share compared to all the clouds. So you have scalability, cost savings, accessibility, flexibility, reliability, security, and collaboration. As I mentioned, one example, let's say I have some capital to run the business. Within five minutes, I can create account with AWS. Within 10 minutes, I can launch my, my, I can host my website. Then I can concentrate on my business, not on this IT infrastructure. That's how it is, uh, you know, account of accessibility, flexible, it's a reliable, and not only that, it's secure. And I can collaborate as well. As I mentioned, I hired a developer. I'll only grant access to the specific service. And granularity. Grant means based on his roles and responsibilities only, I will grant access to uh, to that service. Limited service access. That's called collaboration I can do with my other stakeholders. And scalability, I mentioned one example with the scalability. Then cost savings. Obviously, you're not hiring, you're not setting up your own data center. You're just creating an account. It's a free account again. 12 months of free account. While you're creating account, they charge two rupees from you, and within 48 hours, they'll give you. Why? They want to know who you are. So that is one. Next one will go on. These are the job opportunities you have after completion of this course. Again, this course is divided into two parts: cloud engineer and DevOps engineer. There is a difference. So you can apply, you can be as a cloud architect. Cloud architect, maybe cloud engineer, maybe cloud developer. Let's say I'm a Java developer. Now everybody is moving to the cloud. I want to secure my job. So you have to learn cloud computing. Upon the cloud computing, you'll be learning some of the cloud development tools. Then your job is secure. Cloud for developers. Next, cloud operation manager, security specialist, data engineers, and business analyst. These are the different roles you have after completion of this course. Also, after completion of this course, you'll be in a position to claim yourself as a DevOps engineer who works on different cloud. You, you might work on cloud computing, you might work on on premises. You'll be able to balance between on prem and cloud. Who you are, DevOps engineer. Why you are DevOps engineer? Because you'll be learning about CI and CD tools. Not only cloud computing, you're also learning CI CD tools, which means you automate most of the things. That we will discuss in day three. Tomorrow we will focus more on AWS. Today, I hope you, whatever the agenda I have explained, it's I believe it's clear. I don't know how much you understood. 
If you have any questions, feel free to let me know.